Unified Heavyweight Champion Tyson Fury has called out Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder on Twitter and challenged them both to unification fights in 2017. Now, first and foremost, Tyson Fury has a situation to sort out with Vladimir Klitschko with regards to a rematch. So we have to see how that goes first before he starts calling out other people or potentially fighting other people. That's no mean feat defeating Vladimir Klitschko for a second time. So let's see how that goes. And also he's got this situation to sort out with UCAD and this alleged failed drug test. But provided he gets past those obstacles, then 2017 could be a very, very bright year for Tyson Fury indeed, at least in terms of being involved in big fights. At this point in time, Tyson Fury's stock is very high. His win over Vladimir Klitschko made a believer out of many people who were not believers previously and it galvanised the belief of those who were already Tyson Fury supporters. Most people believe that Tyson Fury, and I've seen this countless places on the internet, most people believe that Tyson Fury can beat every single heavyweight in the world. They think he handles Joshua and Deontay Wilder with ease. I've seen many people say this, that he will handle both of them easily. I wholeheartedly disagree. Now, let me just read out Tyson Fury's tweet because I always find Tyson Fury entertaining. I love his trash talk. He says, this year, October, bitch Vlad, March 2017, weightlifter AJ, summer 2017, hollow Wilder. Let's make this happen. Let's dance, pussies. <laughs> Gotta love the Gypsy King with the trash talk. But I believe that in, it, it, you know, if any division is a situation where it's rock, paper, scissors, as the wire likes to say, I think it's the heavyweight division. I don't see Tyson Fury remaining undefeated if he fights all these guys. I just don't see it. If Tyson Fury fights AJ, rematches Vlad, fights Deontay Wilder, Luis Ortiz, Joseph Parker, I don't see any way in hell that Tyson Fury remains undefeated. No way. Styles make fights. These guys were talking about, or these guys I just mentioned, are far more naturally aggressive than a Vladimir Klitschko. These are not the kind of guys who are going to stand back and allow themselves to get jabbed to a 12-round points loss and just capitulate like that mentally. These guys are not built like that. These guys are going to go for it. These are younger guys, particularly in the case of Joshua and Wilder. They're going to go for it if they're getting outboxed. During the career of Lennox Lewis, the, uh, up until now anyway, the greatest British heavyweight of all time, he was in a couple of fights being outboxed. For the first full five rounds against Frank Bruno, he was being outboxed. For the first three rounds against Vitaly Klitschko, three, four rounds, he was being outboxed. But he didn't just stay on the outside worried about getting hit and think, oh God, I'm getting outboxed here. What should I do? The same thing over over again until round 12. No, he didn't do that. When Lennox Lewis was getting outboxed, he was like, you know what? This boxing thing ain't working. I'm just going to have to go for it. The Vitaly Klitschko fight being a prime example, Emmanuel Stewart said, look, this guy's too tall. You're getting hit with jabs and shots at long range. You're going to have to take it to him. And Lewis went out in the very next round and took it to Vitaly Klitschko, cracked him with a right hand on the eye over the top, bust his eye open. The guy needed God knows how many stitches, hit him with uppercuts. Lewis turned it into a dogfight rather than get out boxed. Vladimir Klitschko don't have the heart, or he hasn't shown it so far in his career anyway, to do what Lennox Lewis did many times. And that was turn a fight into a dogfight if he's getting outboxed. What I'm telling you is, people like AJ, people like Luis Ortiz and you know many of these other fighters, they're not going to stand on the outside like Vladimir Klitschko and get their heads jabbed off and do nothing about it. 
they're definitely going to go for it if they feel like they're falling behind on the cards. It's not hard to find a fighter with more heart than Vladimir Klitschko. Trust me. It is hard to find a fighter who is as, or a heavyweight, a big heavyweight, who's as technically good as Klitschko. That's very hard. It is hard to find a fighter who, a, a, a big heavyweight, who has such good balance as Vladimir Klitschko, such an incredible jab, such great punching power in both hands. That is very difficult to find. You know, Vladimir Klitschko is tremendously talented. I've always said this. But in terms of his heart, listen, there are fighters out there on British level, amateurs who have got more heart than Vladimir Klitschko. I'm just being real. So if you're thinking that Tyson Fury is going to go in there and just be jabbing, jabbing, jabbing like he did against Vladimir against someone like Joshua and Joshua's just going to stand there like, oh, I don't know what to do. I'm not going to go for it. If you think Joshua's going to do that, you are very, very naive indeed. Joshua's going to go for it. If and when Anthony Joshua versus Tyson Fury happens, that fight is going to be far more action-packed. I guarantee it. It is going to be far more action-packed than Tyson Fury, Vladimir Klitschko 1 was. Definitely. Because AJ is going to try and go for it if he's getting outboxed. And let's see if he if Fury can even outbox him. We're all assuming that Fury can. And it's understandable because Fury has shown good slick boxing skills. AJ's never really shown the ability to box on the back foot. And I suspect that's where AJ's biggest weakness is on the back foot. So, you know, but coming forward, you know, maybe he'll be able to compete with Tyson Fury in terms of boxing skills. We'll see. We don't know how good AJ is yet. We know a lot more about Tyson Fury than we do about AJ. But my long-winded point here is I am not one of these people that thinks Tyson Fury is going to beat everybody in the, division, in the division. Not at all. I've said this many times and I have to say it again. I have to reiterate. I think this era in heavyweight boxing is going to be more like the 70s or the 90s where the world titles are swapping hands all the time. And that none of these guys are going to are going to stay undefeated. Joshua's going to lose. Wilder's going to lose. Fury's going to lose. Parker's... All these guys are going to lose. And that's the beauty of it. We're going to have, we're going to see what these guys are really made of. We're going to see these guys lose fights and have to come back. That's what's going to happen in this era of heavyweight boxing. We're going to see some classic fights as well. I'm telling you, over the next five, six, seven years, we are going to see some of the best heavyweight fights of all time i'm telling you that's gonna happen people can poo poo it and say this that and the other way i'm telling you right now because i've seen it all before when you've been around in boxing long enough and you've seen it you've seen situations unfold you've seen divisions get hot when you've seen all that then you'll notice the signs you know, not many people really knew how good, for example, Riddick Bowe versus Evander Holyfield was going to be. Before the fight, people were saying, oh, you know, could be a good fight. But people weren't thinking this is going to be one of the classic heavyweight fights of all time. But that's what it turned out to be. The first fight between Holyfield and Bowe turned out to be one of the greatest heavyweight fights, of heavyweight championship fights of all time. An all-time classic. I'm, gonna, I'm telling you right now, within the next few years, we're going to see at least one, maybe two, three, all-time classic heavyweight fights. That's what we're going to see. Mark my words. Uh, and all these guys are going to swap wins and losses. It's going to be a great time. So, uh, you know, we might have to wait a little bit. But good things come to those who wait. The talent is there. Eventually, the talent has to collide. This is not like the heavyweight division during the majority of the Klitschko reign, where it was a bunch of short, fat heavyweights going up against the Klitschko's who are tall, extremely well-conditioned, talented, technically good athletes. It's not like that. Now we've got loads of big guys, just as big as, as the Klitschko's, if not bigger. Big punches, athletic guys, guys who are in shape. We've got all that now. We didn't have that during the majority of the Klitschko era. This is why it's a much better time for heavyweight boxing than it was, you know, the previous 10 years. So, yeah. Anyway, those are my thoughts. If... 
Tyson Fury gets past Klitschko. Obviously, we have to see the manner of his victory over Klitschko if he manages to beat him. Because a lot of times in boxing, you're only as good as your last fight in the eyes of many boxing fans. So how well he, you know, he may do against, or how well people think he may do against Joshua or Wilder could well depend on how he looks against Vladimir Klitschko. But as it stands right now, how many, how many of you guys think that Tyson Fury beats everyone in the heavyweight division? How many of you are confident of that? How many of you think that he could just easily outbox Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder and both of them are just going to do exactly what Klitschko did and stand on the outside and do nothing? How many of you think that? I'll be interested to know. Drop your comments in the comment section below. It's your boy Hatman, I'm out.